Hello, BookTube. I have a little mail for you today, some packages, and also the Martha's Vineyard Gazette. This is a, uh, a broadsheet newspaper, uh, old-fashioned print newspaper from the island of Martha's Vineyard off the coast of Massachusetts. Uh, the Vineyard Gazette has a storied history. They also have wonderful, look at this, look at the original black and white photography. That is just wonderful. That's on the front page. That is just wonderful. Uh, the Vineyard Gazette often will feature a review by yours truly, not this particular issue, but, uh, but that doesn't matter anyway, because nobody looks at the inside of the Vineyard Gazette. Not first, anyway. First, they look at the three columns in the back, about gardening, birding, and all of outdoors. That's, that's the first thing that people look at, because those things are evergreen, they're universal. Uh, and I, I have often said, uh, that the Martha's Vineyard Gazette is my favorite local newspaper anywhere in the United States, but uh, that's going to get harder and harder for me to say <laughs> now, isn't it? That's going to get harder and harder for me to say because I am, if you missed the announcement, I am now the book section editor of a local newspaper in the United States, a local print newspaper in the United States, not on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, the Vineyard Gazette is in very good hands, <laughs> but uh, in northern Georgia, Big Canoe News. Uh, the digital... April issue of which has just gone live. So my first issue is now live. You can now see the graphics design that I was raving about. Uh, I'll leave a link down below. Big Canoe News uh, publishes its entire contents without a paywall, so you can read the whole of the April issue, including the multitude of very good reviews in the book section. I, there's a little announcement uh, letting Big Canoe readers know that the book section editor has changed, that, that the old editor is leaving and that the new editor is coming in. is a bit of my biography there. And then a bunch of reviews and a mystery column. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that down below and uh, I encourage you to go and read it. The, the, the uh, web traffic is monitored. So a, a healthy showing on web traffic is always nice for, for a small newspaper. This is a small newspaper, but I think you'll agree when you look at it, it doesn't look small. It looks totally eye-poppingly professional. And if you like what you see, if you like, uh, in addition to the book section, I should, I should also warn you, those of you watching this video, that the book section, the book's coverage on the, way, on the electronic version is under news. It's not under arts and entertainment. It's under news, which I kind of sort of like. Uh, but in addition to that, you can also do, uh, not of you are going to care, but, uh, but for me, it was the very first thing I looked at, and boy, oh boy, was it thrilling. If you want, you can look at that electronic issue and see my name on the masthead. <sighs> A newspaper book section editor again, after all this time. And if you, if you look at the electronic version and you like what you see, $30 a year will get you those delivered to your doorstep. We'll get you a, a monthly issue delivered to your doorstep of Big Canoe News. Which has, I think you'll agree when you look at the electronic version, lots and lots of fun stuff. The editorials are always interesting and sometimes poetic. There's lots of local news that won't probably be of immediate interest to non-Georgian readers. And then there's the book section, which is not local. It is not, it is not a regional book section. It is national new releases. Some peppy freelancers, some peppy stuff. Plus a mystery column this time around. The mystery column won't be every month, uh, but I'm thinking maybe a column every month of some kind or other. Uh, but one way or another, uh, if you like the look of that and you want that book's coverage, in, you know, with the ink coming off on your fingers, feel free to drop $30 for a subscription. I'm sure that on the website that I link to, you will, you will be encouraged in the right direction if that's what you want to do. Uh, and who knows? It might be that by this time next week, I have a copy of Big Canoe News to show you. Uh, a four-pay print section, uh, print newspaper book section editor again after all this time. How wonderful. <laughs> but we also have books. Uh, packages. There are two packages from publishers, and there's a big box that has Amazon right on it. So one of you has uh, engaged in rule number one. Those of you who are new to this channel, rule number one is, I want all the books. Send me books. Send me all the books. So if you go to a church book sale, or your local savers, or whatever, and you're looking at the shelf after shelf of books, and you're thinking, oh, I want this one, and I want this one too, and I guess I'm done, although I can think that Steve would like that, and that, and that, and that. What you are to do is get that, and that, and that, and that. Put them in a box and send them to me. Because I am an official sexy influencer. Now that I have more than 10,000 subscribers, I'm not just a booktuber. 
<laughs> but anyway, anyway, one of you has definitely obeyed rule number one. And it's a big box, too, so maybe one of you sent me another series of murder mysteries. That would be kind of fun. Uh, what have we got, though, first? First, we have advanced copies from publishers. Uh, so this, this uh, next one is, the first one here is in late July. Uh, and it is by Jeff Mon Manaw and Nicola Twilly. Oh, my. Oh, goodness gracious. Look at this. It's called Until Proven Safe. The history and future of quarantine. And you've got a, a bubonic plague, plague doctor there with the mask on. Good Lord. A book about quarantine. Throughout history, I assume. Uh, it's the, uh, they, the authors first began working on Until Proven Safe. The topic of quarantine seemed a relatively niche subject to focus on. As they were doing re reporting for their book in the years before COVID-19, the idea that quarantine still even held modern relevance was occasionally met with disbelief from the people they were speaking to. Needless to say, with the one-year anniversary of lockdowns now upon us, it's clear that the tool of quarantine is as relevant as ever, and the present seems a perfect moment to reconsider what quarantine actually means, what, is, what it is, how it's been used in the past, and how we can use it better in the future. The authors begin their investigation in the Mediterranean, where they visit some of the oldest quarantine structures, originally built to protect against the spread of the Black Death, that, uh, these are from the London uh, and, and Italy, following the path of John Howard, an 18th century prison reformer who became interested in the conditions of people kept in quarantine, the authors write about their visits to former lazarettos in Dubrovnik, Split, Malta, Venice. They show how quarantine powers have been abused throughout history, used to lock up immigrants and loose women here in the United States. They also turn their gaze to other types of quarantine and isolation from the years-long quarantine uh, of cacao plants in greenhouse facility in London to the quarantine of astronauts returning to Earth from the first moon landings. And, of course, they write about more recent events, from Ebola to COVID. So COVID is covered in this book. Uh, they write about the modern federal quarantine facility in Omaha, which they visited not long before its official opening, and where, later on, 15 Americans from the Diamond Princess cruise ship would be housed in the early days of the COVID crisis. And they write about attending a simulation exercise in October of 2019. Oh, my. Organized by Johns Hopkins Center for Health and Security, in which they gamed out the consequences of a fictional, novel coronavirus pandemic. Good Lord, can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this comes out in late July. I imagine it's going to get a lot of coverage. <laughs> I will certainly cover it myself. Uh, it's a, it's a, in addition to everything else, a touchy subject. Uh, because I have not seen myself any convincing... Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of convincing scientific reporting about quarantine in specific connection with COVID-19. Or if I have seen convincing scientific reporting about it, I have seen convincing reporting that also undermines that. Some of the countries in this, in in like for instance the West, that have had the longest and strictest lockdowns, are still experiencing surges of this pandemic. How is that? How is that possible? I, I, I imagine there are ways in which it's possible. This thing will probably teach me a lot. I haven't seen a whole lot of correlation between strict lockdowns and the eradication of a pandemic. It's it seems to me in a lot of cases that I look at, as if it doesn't matter one way or another, uh, as if other factors might be much more important. But I'm a novice, so <laughs> we will see. We will see what the book has to say. Uh, then we have another one of these big white uh, envelopes here, these, these big things here, uh, come in four or five different sizes. We'll see what this... Oh, careful, careful, careful. Oh, my God. <laughs> careful there. Oh, my God. Boy, the ergonomics are just never going like, to give me a break here. They just never are. Uh, so let's see here. What is this next one? Oh, okay, this is out already. Uh, this must be the finished copy. Okay, uh, well, uh, paging Alex, what page are you on? <laughs> this is, uh, I think we saw this already. We saw the advanced copy of this. Here is the finished copy. This is Kikuyu, Kiko, Kiku, Kuko, uh, to Sumura. There's no such thing as an easy job. Uh, this is going to be a paperback original, $18. Yeah, so this is probably the finished copy. Uh, translated into English for the first time. Let's try this again. Kikuko Tsumura 
winner of Japan's most prestigious literary award, has woven a strange, compelling, darkly funny tale of one woman's search for meaning in the modern workplace in her witty novel, There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job. A young woman walks into an employment agency and requests a job that has the following traits. It is close to her home, it requires no reading, no writing, and ideally very little thinking. I have an eerie suspicion that those three qualifications also apply to the generation of books like this. Uh, her first gig, watching the hidden camera feed of an author suspected of storing contraband goods, turns out to be inconvenient. When can she go to the bathroom? Her next gives way to the supernatural, announcing advertisements for shops that mysteriously disappear. As she moves from job to job, writing trivia for rice cracker packages, punching entry tickets to purportedly haunted public parks, it becomes increasingly apparent she's not searching for the easiest job at all, but something altogether more meaningful. And when she finally discovers an alternative to the daily grind, it comes with a price. There's no such thing as an easy job is, uh, is as witty as it is unsettling. A deadpan novel with a clear and humorous voice about millennial burnout. The futility of work and the oddities of late capitalism. Why we're just hitting the hits here, aren't we? <laughs> uh, through the fascinating lens of modern Japanese society. And the author is a writer from Osaka. And this is translated by Polly Barton, uh, who lives in Bristol. So, paging Alex. <laughs> uh, we will see. I have the advanced copy of this thing, but even though it's it's out already, I haven't actually read it. Uh, so I should get on that right away. Uh, now that I have the finished copy, I'll just read this. I'll read it tonight. Uh, on the off chance that this is not just more uh, zillennial Japanese zombie fiction, in which the main character thinks nothing, feels nothing, does nothing, changes not at all, and then the book ends. <laughs> and we'll have to see. We'll have to hope that's not the case. If that is the case, I want to stress to the to the writers of such things, that's not fiction. That's not anything. It's not anything at all. It's just you putting quotation marks and periods in your journal entries, which is... Not anything. It's not, not anything at all. <laughs> so, but maybe this won't be that. Maybe this will be revelatory. <laughs> One way or another, I can certainly say to you employers out there, uh, if you have an applicant, if you have a, a job opening of any kind where it's a temporary gig job or a permanent job, if you have uh, an applicant for that job who is under the age of 30, under no circumstances hire them for any reason whatsoever. There. Pretty easy. <laughs> That's pretty easy advice. Uh, if you have an opening for a job of any kind, any duration, any seriousness, any complexity or ease, the people you should dismiss out of hand from even considering for that job is anyone below the age of 30. Okay, there we go. Because if you hire someone below the age of 30, you're not only going to get no work out of them, you're going to get a lawsuit out of them. <laughs> for expecting the work you're not getting. But there we go. We'll, we'll see. There's no such thing as an easy job. I will uh, I will uh, read it. I may be pleasantly surprised. Maybe I'll send it to Alex. He's a hell of a new book to fall in love with. But then we have the box. Uh, this great big thing from Amazon. Uh, so I don't know. One of you has gone to a lot of trouble. I joke about rule number one on this channel, but I really don't want you going to a lot of trouble uh, to send me things. Uh, so what, what have we got here? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No. <laughs> Does this come from the man himself? <laughs> Look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. I <laughs> I said I said on this channel once, I believe. I don't think I've said it more than once. The way it's eerie how much people listen <laughs> to to a crazy old coot. I mentioned that the thing I want from Jason Harrigan when he's finally free from lockdown is Hilary Mantel's Thomas Cromwell series in the UK editions in a box set. Because the UK editions are beautiful. And the American editions very much are not. And that's what I got. I got, I got them in a box set. Look how beautiful this is. Look at this. Oh, now get up. Oh, this is just lovely. Look at that. That is just beautiful. I have to assume that this is coming from Jason. I, I have to assume that's true. The the, uh, the scamp hasn't mentioned it <laughs> on our uh, 
on Voxer exchanges. Now, the wags among you, especially those of you who have been subject to my Voxer messages, are going to say that maybe he hasn't mentioned it because I haven't given him a chance to speak. <laughs> That's enough out of you. <laughs> uh, and that may be true, but even so, oh, this is beautiful. Good Lord. Oh, let me show you uh, what we've got here. I want to be gentle so I don't destroy this right away. Uh, because inside the box, we have all of these, the individual volumes, and they come with these, these cloth bookmarks. How beautiful. Oh, my. Oh, fantastic. How lovely. Uh, wow. Okay, well, <laughs> this is going to be really, really tempting to distract me from the things that I should read. Not, not, that, I'm, not that I'm meaning to imply that, uh, that these books are any better than there's no such thing as an easy job. I'm not, that would be mean, <laughs> wouldn't it? But, uh, well, okay, I'm assuming that I'm thanking Jason, but I will vox him as soon as I finish this video and find out if he's the one who sent this. Whoever sent this, I'm incredibly grateful. <laughs> I'm just incredibly grateful. I absolutely love these books. I've reviewed I, all three of them. Uh, for one publication or another, and couldn't be happier about that, so <laughs> it's going to be very tempting not to reread these. So that are, those are our books. We have uh, the Cromwell Trilogy. Uh, then we have There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job, and Until Proven Safe, A History of Quarantine as a Social and, and uh, Medical practice good lord that's going to be something I, that doesn't come out for a while so i don't have to i don't have to get to that right away but the other two <laughs> then there's no such thing as an easy job i have to read today especially since i'm already feeling a little catholic guilt over bashing it around a bit when it might be good you never know all the indications are against it being good but it might be you never know i need to read it first uh and of course the thomas cromwell books <laughs> anyway, I'm thrilled. I'm going to I'm going to wrap this up and coo over my box set. I love box sets. <laughs> so I will see you soon. Thank you book 2.